had this conversation in her head where she would go back and forth and back and forth about what was going on or what she should do. And she would say it in her head, like, Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. But yeah. her pull was to do what she wanted to do versus what she thought Marsha would do or what people would like more. Yeah. And so I find that to be the case for me. So like when it comes to organizing, sometimes I'm on this side where in my mind, I can organize it, but in the physical, I don't have tactics for it or it's the reverse. I have the mm -hmm. tactics for it but I don't have the time for it. So I just don't do either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is, which is like a classic ADHD symptom. I have not been yeah. diagnosed, but I yeah. would not be surprised if I, if I do have ADHD. I, yeah. so anywho, yeah. what type of advice would you offer in a situation like that? Well, first of all, that is so common, right? We want someone to tell us exactly what to do, first of all, no matter what we like it. We, that's why we, you know, that's why we watch TV. Like we like to see experiences in front of us of these people living out their lives, doing this thing, because in a way we're learning like, oh, you know, they did this and they did that in this situation. How interesting. Maybe I can try this in my life. And I know that that's not why we always watch TV, but the, I do believe that that's part of one of the reasons as humans humans, we're constantly just trying to look at other people's behavior and, and think like what's working for them and like what's not working for them. So with my organizing, of course, I always have those tools in the backpack. You know what I mean? I have those tools to give out. Um, but if you were my client, what I probably would be asking you first is, have you had any thoughts, had any ideas of some things that you could do in, well, first of all, we'd have to identify what it is exactly, like what the space is that's, you know, bothering you. And then I would say, okay, have you had any thoughts at all, ideas at all of anything that you could do, even if it's really, really small, that would help you be more organized? That yes. would be the first question. And have you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so if you have, and you don't have to tell me, and that's okay if you want. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what is it? What are they? So this is what I'm going to do um, mm -hmm. with some new things. So like right now we're in spring and mm -hmm. I'm planning to do some spring cleaning. And the way that I envision doing that mm -hmm. is I'm going to take three sticky notes and I'm going to write a word on each one and I'm going to put them on the floor and make three piles. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be um, keep, throw away, or donate. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it is that I'm bringing out, if it's not something that is still useful um, or if it's clothes, not something that I still wear or whatever, I'm going to put it in the right pile and then I'm going to do what that sticky note tells me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give myself a time. I'm going to do it for 15 minute increments because that helps me to focus 15 minutes at a time. And then I can do this like four times if I want to, mm -hmm. but just to be that strategic about it and just spend maybe a couple of hours a day on the weekends until I get it done. That is the plan that I envision right now. So now, is there any challenges that you think that, you know, could come up for you that might block you from doing that thing? You know, Absolutely. what could, what could those be? not having the time to do that or the time that I set aside having something else come up that I have to give my attention to. Yeah. And so that is actually a very, very, very common problem that I see and hear from clients is knowing what they need to do, but not knowing how to like make themselves do it. And a lot of the excuses that we give ourselves are going to be like, I don't have the time or I don't know how to set the time. And I don't mean to call it an excuse, but at the same time, um, have you ever heard like the things that are worthwhile are the things that you will make time for? I don't know if that makes sense, but if you value something, if you really value, you know, going through and doing this spring cleaning, then it's going to be so motivating for you to get that done that you are going to want to make that time. So with my client, I would ask them, okay, so what is the challenge of carving out the time? Like what is the block that's keeping you from making that time? Well, I have a project that is 
much more important or desirable to me to work on than yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I might revert to that. <laughs> right. And so here's an idea is that some days things are more important to you than other days. And really, we have to start looking at what is important long term, because Our minds and our feelings, like, you know, I know we go through the process of, you know, what we value changing constantly, right? Like if I don't spend a lot of time with my son, then what I'm going to value more than working is hanging out with him. So if I'm working three or four days, like nonstop six, seven, eight hours a day, you know, with breaks in between of like maybe, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes. And I start to notice that I'm not doing a lot of stuff with with him that I want to be doing. Then I start thinking like, okay, well, that project that's due in March, I'm not going to spend my time doing that because I want to spend it with my son. And that, in my opinion, as an organizer is, is something that you have to really ask yourself is that really what you want? Because the thing is, is yes, spending time with my, with my son is important, but I don't have to sacrifice my long-term goal either. So it's not like a black and white situation. You know what I mean? All or nothing. It's yeah. not all or nothing. You can carve time to spend with your son. And this is just speaking for myself, yeah. but also carve time to finish that project that's due in March. And the way that you do that is you constantly think every single day of your long-term, your long-term wants and remind yourself that the things that you value are going to change every day. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. And, and we so priorities. Yeah. Wait, what was that? I'm sorry. I I said, yeah. And we can create priorities, like a priority list of what it is that you want to accomplish long-term. So absolutely. Absolutely. And also, you know, as an organizer too, I like to tell people that if you have a calendar that you go to every day, I have one that I check in the morning and I check at night. And if you can physically get yourself to carve out even just like 10 to 15 minutes of that thing that you don't really think you value that much today because something else is way more important. If you can't do that thing today and you carve 10, 15 minutes out maybe tomorrow or the next day and it's on your calendar, that 10, 15 minutes, you are so much more likely to go and do that thing during a time when you're like, "Mm, I don't really like feel like doing this because this other thing is way more important because you're reminding yourself that it's a long-term goal and it's not like, it's not a short-term goal. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right. So I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about technology because Mm -hmm. we have technology, um, you know, we're in a a technological age and we have a lot of things that are on the forefront. Um, Mm -hmm you know, at our disposable, what, what do you use as far as technology goes that helps you in your business and with your clients? Yeah. So to be completely honest, I have a policy of keep things simple. I like keeping things as simple as possible. I like to have only one calendar Um, I like to sync my calendar if I have to have multiple calendars. What I mean by that is like I have a a CRM, a client retention program, HoneyBook. I use HoneyBook and HoneyBook has a calendar inside of HoneyBook that you can use to schedule out your clients. And that calendar can be synced with your Google calendar. And I have an email for, for my podcast, uh, International uh, Coaches Roundtable, that um, I use that email or we, as we have, I have three other people, three other hosts, um, we use that email and the calendar to schedule interviews. I sync my calendar with that calendar as well. And so what really is happening is like, I am literally only having one calendar, you know, for myself that I check every day because all of my calendars are synced. I don't super love having a bunch of programs for my business. I think it becomes way 
way too busy. Um, I like keeping things as personal as possible. I do like to set automations in HoneyBook. Like Honey, like I said, HoneyBook is the client retention uh, program that I use. And you can actually create an email that's, um, that you set as an automation that goes out You know, every time someone emails you that's just a welcome email. You can create an onboarding uh, packet that is automatic every time somebody schedules, schedules with you. So it just goes right to their email. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't heavily rely on technology. And then for problems with home in the home with organizing um, or habit creation, I heavily rely on paper and pen and the reason for that is because my belief is that if you are able to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen or notebook, you know, I you know, I use a notebook, but if you are able to get yourself to sit down with a paper and notebook and write out different things that you have to do or different priorities that you want to accomplish, that is bringing you so grounded. Like you are literally only focusing on your hand, the pen, the notebook, and the thing that you want to create. So there's like a lot of things happening in that moment when you are writing. Like you are writing what you want to have happen for yourself, what you are valuing are your long-term or short-term goal, short-term goals. But you're also like in a way visualizing too. You're like shutting the curtains for everything else and you're dedicating and focusing on just that thing right then and there. And the paper and pen for me anyways, really helps ground me. So nice. yeah, I do tell people that that's what I recommend. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So as we round out mm -hmm. um, the interview here, yeah. what are some, um, what are some tips that you would give someone who is starting out if they are on the fence that they're, they're wondering if this is the time to start it or if they should or not. What advice do you wish you had mm -hmm. at that time uh, would you share? Yeah, well, I guess what I would say is, well, it depends on what kind of organizing or coaching that they're really looking for. But whatever change that you're looking to create, I think that it's really important to ask yourself, if you don't change that thing, like what are you missing out on? Like, what are the risks of not changing that? If you don't change that thing that you want to change, whether it be your environment or a habit or I, I don't know, so whatever. If you don't change that, is it potentially going to limit your life experience in the long run? And if it is, and that means something to you, then you really should just, you know, reach out for some guidance because it can be really hard to do these things by yourself. And it's okay that it's hard and it's okay that it feels embarrassing or even could feel like you almost can sometimes feel like ashamed of yourself. And just to have somebody there with you to tell you like, oh man, like, you are literally, you are so not alone. Like you have no idea how many people are experiencing this right now. And also me too, I, I went through it myself. If I had not found a therapist when I was 13 or 14, when I was going through my eating disorder, who welcomed me into her office at my high school, like her office space was beautiful. It was like, walking into like, I felt like I was going on vacation. Like she had this beautiful rose picture on the wall. She had a throw on her office chair. Her, her office smelled like flowers. It was like everything in my world that was going wrong just felt like non-existent because yeah. that space that she created for me, not only to share my feelings, and everything that was going on, but also just the, like the aesthetic and just like the way, the presence that I felt, it was a game changer. Like it's what helped me to survive. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And I commend yeah. you for being like that mature, having the foresight to, to take it up on yourself, to go get help like that. Like you changed the trajectory of your life. I really 
I can't hide, you know, eating disorders or any kind of addiction is not something to play around with. I mean, it really can ruin your life, but also take your life. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Yeah. So, so tell, tell us something whimsical about yourself that <laughs> might be surprised to know, like particularly those who know you very well. Um, so like for people that he even maybe know me, but they don't know this thing about yes. me. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Whimsical. Why can't I think of what the definition of that is? What is, what is something that's kind of playful? Um, oh, playful. Okay. You no, know, like it could be like a hidden talent or a hidden desire, something like that. That they just oh. might something that's sort of counter to your personality. You know that they might see counter. Okay. To your something. Yeah. Like that. Well, anybody who who knows me knows that I'm like super goofy and quirky and like I'm, you know, I'm that person for sure. But I guess maybe what people don't really know, I guess, too much is because I'm so playful and because I I love to dance around, I like to just be weird, that I also um that I also am very like. I hate to say this about myself because I feel like I'm boasting about myself, but no, just I, don't, don't you dare apologize for that. Do it. Do I it. guess I feel like I am actually really like intelligent. And what I mean by that is I know a lot of things that I don't think people do know that I know. They look at me and they hear me talk. And I think, and a lot of the time they, they might hear like a, almost like a valley girl, like kind of like accent come out. And I don't mean to have that. It's so annoying, but it's just what I was brought up around. And so this comes through, but it can sometimes create almost an air of like, just goof, you know, like I'm just goofy. And sometimes people can judge, not even like meaning to, but just judge that actually there's a, there's a much deeper side there, like a much more intelligent side that um, if you just pay attention, that there's actually some, some, some crazy stuff that I've been through <laughs> and uh, have come out the other end. I don't even know if a lot of people knew that I, you know, had that eating disorder um, and stuff, but there's just so much more. There's so much more. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, Sasha, yeah. for being with us today. I really have enjoyed this conversation. Oh. Me too. Thanks. And I, I look forward to your book. Oh yeah. I was just, oh, thank you. I was just telling my fiance. I was like, okay, okay. I've hit a lot of, of those bucket list items. I got to get to that book maybe within the next two years. I'm, I like to give myself a good, like, what's the word? like cushion, you know, as a professional organizer, I tell people don't set your standards too high, you know, do small things, do small things for big wins. And so, um, yeah, within the next couple of years, hopefully. <laughs> well, I just want to say this, I have written a book too, and I wrote it a while ago, but it's not, it's, it's finished, but mm -hmm. I need to send it like through the last edit. Um, and I need to get the, the book cover, right. And so what I would say to you is that the process is not as intense as you think. Really? I got a coach to help me do it. And the way that he teaches people how to do it is in 30 days. Wow. And with technology, it's definitely doable in 30 days. So oh. I just want you to think about that. Oh. You don't need two years to write a book. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about my next one oh, because wow. it's, it's, it's such an easier process in this day and age with technology and just the way that you can write a book, you don't have to write it. You know, it doesn't have to be handwritten first. Like you don't need to do your rough draft that way. There's so many ways to do it. And then being self-published, that's the game changer. You don't have to wait for someone to accept your manuscript or not. You can publish it yourself and you wow. can strategically market it yourself so that you sell it. Like there's a whole thing to this. So I just... Want to leave you with that. Thank yes. you so much. Well, I look forward to your book too. I, I'm 100% going to buy it. And oh, I, I just enjoy, I enjoy this connection and just thank you for taking the time to interview me and hear my story. It might be a little, um, you know, awkward at times. I've never done an interview, but I am just happy to share all of the things that I know. So 
You did an excellent job. I would not have, I don't think anybody would have guessed that you haven't done an interview before. Oh, that's good. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Um, Thank you so much, Sasha. And if yeah. any, and if people want to um, get in touch with you, if they want to reach out, how can they do that? Absolutely. Yeah. So my website is www.coachsashalouise.com. Um, and I do have an Instagram that's coach underscore slash Louise as well. Um, I also have my own podcast with three other hosts too, and that's the International Coaches Roundtable. And you can connect with me on there too. So yeah, that's about that's about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sasha. Yes, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Okay. Okay. 